Remittance sending can be a complex and sometimes expensive way for migrants to interact with their origin communities. This is why both the Sustainable Development Goals and the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration have set out expectations for reducing remittance costs, helping to make them cheaper, faster, and safer. In this video, we will look at a tool aimed at advancing these goals through data collection, analysis, and presentation, Remitscope Africa. Before exploring this tool, it's important to be up to speed on the complexities of remittances. In particular, my videos on remittance basics, where they come from and where they're going, and the cost of sending remittances will give you some necessary background for what we're about to look at. Also, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I hope you go ahead and click that button and turn on the notifications so you never miss an update. Now let's dive in. Remitscope Africa is an online initiative that collects and analyzes remittances data on 54 African countries. The platform is geared towards policymakers, market analysts, transfer service providers, and actors that support diaspora engagement. However, it is easily accessible by anyone. Any individual needing to know about transfer costs, providers, and regulations for a specific African country can easily get their answers on Remitscope. While the platform has its own team of researchers, the project is a component of the Prime Africa four-year project, which aims to reduce the cost of remittances from the EU to Africa. It's funded by the European Commission, and the project is managed by the Financing Facility for Remittances within the UN International Fund for Agricultural Development, or EFAD. Remitscope suffices two goals of Prime to address the data gap regarding remittance markets and to increase market competition by making information transparent. To gather and analyze data, the Remitscope team works closely with DMA Global, a consultancy firm specialized in improving payment systems and remittance sending, while the World Data Lab created the online platform. These researchers and consultants work with a number of raw data sources to make Remitscope possible. First, there are seven databases currently used. The World Bank Remittances Prices Worldwide, Bilateral Remittance Matrix, Annual Remittance Flows, and Findex are the first four, the latter of which concern savings, borrowing, and financial inclusion. Next, demographic and background information come from UNDESA, which we've looked at in previous migration data videos. Finally, the IMF Financial Access Survey and the GSMA Mobile Money Metrics are consulted for information about the structure of and people's access to remittance sending mechanisms. There is, however, useful information not captured in these datasets, so additional research is necessary. This includes laws each country set for money transfer operators, barriers to transfer like the absence of electronic banking, and the remittance market structure. Remitscope researchers and project partners typically consult government websites, legal records, market reports, local media, and expert interviews to gather this sort of data. Right now, the site is still in its preview phase, which means a limited amount of data is available for 19 countries, and detailed data is only available for Gambia, Ghana, and Senegal. However, the full site is expected to launch this year. Nevertheless, we can still explore the full depth of this tool using Ghana as an example. Before diving into country-specific information, our first stop on the Remitscope website is the interactive map. Here we see four key indicators of the 19 available countries thus far. First is the Importance of Remittances Index, which is a score showing how important remittance flows are for the economy plus individual households. Next is the cost of sending remittances to a country on the map, which is shown as a percent fee applied to each transfer. The final two indexes have to do with the ease of sending remittances. Market openness refers to the ease with which transfer providers can enter remittance sending markets, while digital readiness is a measure of how prepared a country is to accept digital transfers rather than cash handled by agents. These measurements are quite important for reducing remittance costs because countries should be encouraged to move towards digital transfers, which are cheaper for both senders and receivers. Now let's look at the country profile example for Ghana. These reports are brief and intended to be more easily understandable than a country's data deep dive. The country reports have a small number of indicators, mainly 
annual received remittances in U.S. dollars, the average cost of sending remittances to a country, the percent of the population with a bank account and or mobile transfer capabilities, the top origin countries of remittances, the number of transfer operators, both those that accept money from senders to go to the receiving country and operators based in the receiving country that pay out the transfer to its recipients. To get more detailed information about remittance market conditions and regulations, we have to take a deep dive. These documents start out similarly to the country reports with demographic information about the population, including GDP per capita, electricity and internet access, and inflation. Here we see that while 84% of the population has access to electricity, only 38% have internet access, which is a necessary component of electronic banking. Moving down, we see remittances inflows and outflows again, but separated by global and intra-African flows this time. We can also see how much of Ghana's GDP is composed of remittance funds. 5.3% as of 2019. This page also gives us a visualization of immigrants and emigrant stocks, which you can refresh yourself on with this explainer video. Moving on down, we see a few numbers on their own. These financial inclusion indicators tell a story about how many people have bank accounts, access to credit, and the ability to make and receive electronic payments. These last two pages are extremely text-heavy, but interpreting them is straightforward since these switches simply indicate whether each statement or circumstance are true in Ghana. Green for yes and red for no. It is clear that RemitScope is a tool that can take our understanding of remittances further than just a single data set. Not only does it communicate indicators about remittance amounts and costs, it drills down into circumstances shaping remittances. These include people's access to different transfer provider types, either in person or electronically, as well as national level regulations that impact how transfer operators can function. Ultimately, the goal is to shine a light on the factors that reduce the ease of sending remittances and increase their costs so that they can be adjusted in a favorable way to senders and receivers. Thank you for joining me on another explainer video. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment. See you next time.